So the canal fishery has changed pretty dramatically over the 20 or so years I've been fishing here. Um, back when I first started, I was living in Pennsylvania, would come up here a couple times a summer, and not only was it less crowded, but the tackle looked a lot different for what guys used to fish the canal. Back then, the majority of guys used conventional gear. They were using mainly, you know, either pencil poppers or jigs like the crippled herring, heavy bucktails, or uh, sluggos, straight tail soft plastics. One of the things that's changed about the canal fishery to make it the, the hot spot that it is today, you know, the very crowded hot spot that it is today, is that the gear and the fishing has become more accessible. So there's a pretty steep learning curve to fishing the canal back when you're using conventional and using uh, you know, straight tail jigs or bucktail jigs. You had to be really in tune with what your lure was doing. You know, you had to be able to cast a conventional, have that educated thumb. And not only that, you had to be able to cast one far. Over those past two decades, since I first fished the canal, you know, the rods have gotten lighter, but been more powerful. Spinning reels have gotten better. Braided lines have gotten better. More and more people are using them. And it's allowed more people to be able to fish here in the canal using gear that's heavy enough to stop fish in what could be a four or five knot current when this thing's running at full bore. Back when guys were using more rudimentary jigs in the canal, you had to really be in tune with what your lure was doing there. You had to know exactly where the hole was. You had to be able to drop that lure in front of the fish. And it was up to you to give it enough action to make the, uh, make the stripers want to bite it. But alongside the, the tackle improving and becoming more accessible, the rods and reels, the lures also were becoming a little bit more, let's say, fisherman friendly. Whereas with the sluggo that you would glue to a four or five ounce jig head, you had to know exactly where to bounce that and how to work it to make a striped bass want to eat it. And over the past 10 years, one of the lures that's really kind of changed jigging on the canal has been these paddle tail swim baits. And I'm throwing one of those right now. This is a good example of one in the Fish Lab Mad Eel. And with the qualities of this bait is you have a jig head that's completely flush to a slender soft plastic with a kind of a boot tail on the end that's going to kick as you retrieve it. So what makes this bait perfect for the canal or anywhere with deep water and fast moving currents is it has a slender profile. They say it's a sand eel imitator, but really it looks like a wide range of bait fish. It's head weighted and the heads match perfectly to the body, which adds to keeping the water resistance down. So if I just back that off a bit, that soft plastic section right there is cupped, meant to sit flush against the jig head. So there's no water that's gonna get in between there, slow the sink rate, and that's gonna be help it get right to the bottom quickly and then stay down throughout the retrieve. That's the biggest part. You know, you can hit the bottom with any lure if you cast far enough up current, but being able to keep it down right off the bottom through this current is what's gonna really help you catch stripers. You know, the longer your bait staying close to the bottom in the canal, the better shot you have at putting it in front of a big fish. You know, obviously there's times when the fish are fit on the surface or the right against the bank, but you know, think of that like the tip of the iceberg, you know, there's gonna be a small percentage of the time when stripers are feeding on the surface, the rest of the time those fish are on the bottom. Yeah, so this bait too is a lot more user friendly when it comes to fishing it. You don't need to know how to bounce this right into the hole, right into where the fish are sitting. All you need to do is get this thing to hit the bottom and start retrieving it slowly, and that tail is gonna do the rest of the work for you. Um, also aiding and making it pretty easy to use is that these baits, are molded with the channel in there. So you don't have to worry about with some soft plastic baits, you know, you may have to take, do a couple takes to get it to sit right on your jig head. This one already has it in there so that, you know, when you do have to replace the tail, all you have to do is let the hook follow the channel that's already in there. And that'll make it sit perfectly straight. It's not kinked or curled at all, and it's ready to fish. So in addition to the tail kicking action that these baits have, the head shape, you see it's a little bit uh, kind of swoops up there, gives it a little bit of a roll as you retrieve it as well. So it gives it, if you have a uh, you know, kind of a flash pattern like that, throw some flash out there, it sends out more vibration. So it has more action than just the tail itself. And because of the bait being set up that way, you don't necessarily need to glue it. But you know, if you're getting a lot of bites and something, the fish will tend to uh, pull it down the hook. Does not hurt to put a dab of uh, Zappa Gap in there to help it stay right against the jig head. So these paddle tail swim baits are pretty straightforward in how you fish them, but they're also pretty versatile. So if the fish are on top, in the middle of the water column, or glued to the bottom, you know, you can adjust your retrieve with these baits and catch them. 
So everything, you want to start out that cast, and I'm going to try to bounce the bottom here right now. I went a little bit up current. You know, the current right now is moving left to right for me. So I cast it about 11 o'clock. I'm going to give it a chance to hit the bottom. And then once I feel that, one of the first retrieves I do with these is just the very simple, just slow retrieve. And I'm going to keep that very slow. I want it to be just off the bottom. Okay, maybe once in a while I'll give it a little kick like that. But for the most part, I'm letting that tail do all the work. The tail and the current are doing all the work and that bait is just kicking its tail as it sweeps across the canal. So I'm just gonna retrieve super slow. I'm gonna let that tail and I'm gonna let the current do all the work in bringing this lure to life as it just sweeps down and across toward the bank. And then once it gets close in, I'll bring it in for another retrieve. The next way you can fish them, and probably the more popular way for guys to fish these, is to do a simple lift and drop. So with that type of retrieve, same story, I'm gonna cast a little bit up current, probably 11 o'clock, maybe 10.30. So once again, I'm gonna wait for that to hit bottom. And then instead of starting a slow retrieve, I'm gonna lift and drop the rod like that. And what that's gonna do is the, you're gonna have the bait, it's gonna jump up, kick toward the surface, and then I'm gonna lower it back down until I feel bottom, and then do it again. This is a very effective way to fish. Stripers love to hit lures that are falling straight for the bottom. Oh, that'd be nice, that might've been one. And then even at the end of the retrieve, even when I'm done uh, lifting it and dropping it, you know, I'll take a couple cranks nice and slow. Sometimes the bass are hanging right on the shelf, you know, real close to the bank, and just slowly retrieving this along the edge. Sometimes that's where you get your bite, even when you, you know, you can fish this all the way back to the rod tip. So one thing to take into consideration is which size, you know, which weight of these lures to use. And right now, it's the beginning of the east tide, it's around the new moon, we're just a day ahead of the new moon in July, and the tide is just picking up steam. So when it was slack or close to slack, I was able to get away with, this is the three and a half ounce version. It's seven and a half inches, three and a half ounces, and that was just fine. As this car picks up speed, I'm starting to lose touch with the bottom just a little bit. So I'm gonna switch over to, not only I'm gonna change colors to that mackerel one, and this is a five and a half ounce version. So for most, for the most part, when you're fishing during the heavier, uh, or, you know, during the, the the middle of the tide in the canal, this is the size you're going to use. You're going to use five and a half ounces, and that's a pretty heavy lure to use from shore. So make sure you've got a rod that's up for it. A rod that's rated two to six ounces is about as light as you could go for this. A rod rated three to seven, three to eight would be even better. Once again, I'm just going to wait until that hits the bottom. I'm going to feed it a little bit of line, not too much, because I don't want to lose touch with the lure. I want to be able to feel the second it touches down. There it is. Just lift and drop. So pretty simple to fish these, and it's really opened up canal jigging to a lot more anglers uh, over the past past few years since these type of lures have uh, really taken hold here. And I know there have been some very big fish taken on them in the canal. Fish in excess of 50 pounds fall to these every year in here. Just a lot of fun to fish. And uh, you will end up losing a couple. That's just part of the nature of fishing in the canal. You know, but that's, uh, if you're losing lures and getting snagged, you know you're, you're right where the fish are because that's where the stripers are hanging. So the makers of this lure, the Mad Eel, is a company called Fish Lab, and they're relatively new, but when they came out, they designed lures specifically for striped bass fishing and even more specifically for the Cape Cod Canal. You know, they came right out with this heavy-duty, uh, slim-bodied, paddle-tail swim bait geared at catching big stripers in the canal, also works in the surf. Some of the smaller models also works on the boat. They also have an articulated swim bait called the Mac Attack. 
and that has a couple really nice flourishes that make it uh, pretty realistic. It's got finlets just like a mackerel, has that mackerel profile, that mackerel shaped head, and that's a great bait for when the stripers are on the surface, a little bit closer to shore, feeding on baits. You know, you cast that out there and burn it back in. Yeah, so if you're coming to the canal, you're kind of envisioning those fish on top, the big blitzes that you see on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, it's not always that way. More often than not, those fish are glued to the bottom. So if you're making the trip here, make sure you're prepared to fish deep. And for fishing the bottom, this style, this paddle tail swim bait, is probably the most effective way to catch stripers in the Cape Cod Canal right now.